give our star a moment. He's been busy making double play meal deals all day long. <laughs> there you have it. Sounds like the secret is George Webb's double play meal deal. Seven crave worthy cheeseburgers and two fries. Available all season long so you can fuel up for every game. George Webb, our kitchen is always cooking. <laughs> The TMJ's Vince Vetrano for Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin. Nagging pain lasting for months, difficulty performing everyday tasks, not moving like you'd like, it's time to see the doctor. And I recommend Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin. Anytime I've needed care, the appointments are timely, no waiting weeks to be seen, and no pressure to have surgery. It's about getting the right diagnosis and choosing a treatment plan that fits your life. No question where I turn if I'm injured again. The experts in care at Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin. It's orthowisconsin.com. Hi, it's John Reitz from Great Midwest Bank, and as a community bank, we sincerely appreciate our customer loyalty. Over nearly 90 years, we've done all we can to return the favor. Great Midwest Bank offers flexible solutions that bigger banks and credit unions simply can't, because our entire team is right here in the community. We love helping our neighbors when we're at work, and then catching up over the weekend. Visit us at greatmidwestbank.com. Great Midwest Bank, your simply local equal housing lender. WTMJ, W277-CV, and WKTI-HD2 Milwaukee. From the Annex Wealth Management Studios, this is News Radio WTMJ, a good karma brand station. Get up! Get out of here and go! Covering the crew all season long on WTMJ, it's Brewers Extra Innings. Now live from the Annex Wealth Management Studios in downtown Milwaukee at the Avenue, here is your host, Dominic Catronio. Hello, everybody. It is good to be back talking Brewers baseball with you live on the home of the Brewers 620 WTMJ. I'm Dominic Catronio. What a first two games to react to, huh? My goodness, the Reese Hoskins signing continues to grow its legend every single day. The Brewers are 2-0. They win today 7-6 over the New York Mets. They have won the first series of the year, and on Easter Sunday, they will be going for the sweep. Wow, there's a lot to get to. Craig Kishon will be joining us. Don't worry. Plenty to react to with Reese, with this team, with D.L. Hall's debut, with yesterday's game as well. We are going to chop that up, I promise. But let's get you caught up to speed in case you didn't catch the entire game. Here are the three biggest plays, in my eyes, that you need to be ready for. First and foremost, after everything that went down yesterday, did he slide late? Did he slide legally? Was Jeff McNeil actually angry? All that stuff. Reese Hoskins gets a chance to respond in the bottom of the first inning, or rather the top of the first inning at City Field today with a couple of men on. Severino's first pitch, ground ball, past the bag at third and off the tarp and kicks it to left. Yelich is home. Here comes Adamas. He will score. Reese Hoskins with a two-run single and the Brewers lead it three to nothing. Boom, right off the bat, Lane Grindle on the call here on WTMJ. How do you shut up the other team after they gave you the boo birds? You just send a single down the line to score a pair. They don't boo nobodies, remember that. They do not boo nobodies. Reese wasn't done. In fact, in two innings, he would finally connect. Not finally, it's the second game, Dom. He would connect on his first Brewer homer. Severino's 2-2. Hit deep, deep to left field, backing up Nimmo, turning, watching it sail. Goodbye. Reese Hoskins has made a statement at City Field. Josh Maurer, great call once again. That made it 5-1 to one at the time with the Brewers in front. They were in total command of this game. Obviously, things got tight late. We'll talk about the bullpen, what went wrong for Bryce and for Hobie today. But if you missed the fireworks, here's what it sounded like. We fast forward now to the seventh inning. Man on first, one out. Again, the game is still in jeopardy at this point. It's 5-2. to two. It's still very much a ball game. The Brewers had not added uh, any more insurance, or rather 6-2 to two at this point, had not added more insurance, and they're trying to add more. Johan Ramirez, he's been a bit of a journeyman in the minor leagues. I will say he is known for command problems. No excuse for what went down. The pitch. Whoa, over his head to the backstop on the fly. Up to second goes Adamas. Hoskins drops the bat, puts his hands on his hips and stares at Johan Ramirez who walks towards him. Ramirez then says some words to Reese. 
The benches have not cleared as yet, but the pitcher and the batter came almost face to face right in front of the batter's box. And here comes Pat Murphy out of the Brewers dugout. He wants Johan Ramirez ejected from this game. And the umpires say, hold on, Skipper, we're going to talk about this. And they did talk about this, and it ended up ejecting Johan Ramirez. I'm still confused why Carlos Mendoza was not ejected. I guess warnings weren't technically issued live. Everybody in the ballpark knew there were virtual warnings. I mean, you're an idiot if you didn't know what was coming today of what went down. And being able to be in the position that I'm in, Hearing all of the broadcasts, I went and checked in on SNY. Of course, Gary, Keith, and Ron, one of the best boots in baseball. Ron Darling made it made the point very clear, and I thought he put it very well. The message was two hours late. You can't try to hit a guy after he's already beat your brains in, after he's already three for three with a homer. right? It was two hours too late. I thought Ron Darling put that perfectly. Now, we'll get into this with Craig Kishon, like, well, do you throw at him with Severino? I disagreed a little bit with Ron on, well, yeah, Severino should have brushed him back. I don't know if they would have done that. I was expecting this to all kind of bubble over tomorrow. But, hey, it is what it is. The Brewers get the W, a 7-6 to six final score today. So those are the three most important plays you need to know. It was the Reese Hoskins day. No need for a player of the game poll. It's Reese Hoskins, to say the least. Let me get to a few texts. If you want to join the program here this season, save this number in your phone. If you're listening live, 855-616-1620. Again, 855-616-1620. Easy to remember, 620 right there at the end. Save that in your phone, WTMJ talking text line. I would love to have you to participate in the show all season long. So let's get to a few texts. Say your name, where you're from, and I'll make sure to shout you out here on the air. Uh, this one from the 608 area code. People who pick the Brewers for last are crazy. This lineup has really improved and can't wait to see Uribe and Williams back-to-back. Good luck. Yeah, I got a lot to react to with Abner Uribe today. He showed off the holster, and he has been told to be careful with that holster a little bit. More on that a little bit later Number uh, a little bit later on in the program. This one, takeaway number one, this one's from the 727 area code. We have a fire and aren't going to get bullied. If this is how we are with the Mets, imagine how we'll be with the Cubs and the Cardinals. And it adds the Italian fingers, you know, the uh, great flavor emoji. I like that. I, I really do appreciate that text. This one from Mason and Stevens Point. Follow along with your live tweet and, of course, my favorite Brewers show. I have to say there's something fun about this team. So fresh about Yelly and Adamas this season. I could not stop smiling watching them play. I agree. There is some energy. There is some juice right now. And here are my three big takeaways. And I want to break this down with Craig once his television duties are over with. My three takeaways from these first two games. Reese is bringing a presence exactly how the Brewers expected this to go, or at least hoped it would go. When you go get a veteran, bona fide slugger like that, he has done it in the World Series, he has been on a big market team, he knows what it takes, and he has already brought a presence. Obviously, he's in the middle of all of it with the slide, but aside from that, he gives a, a punch. I mean, he batted sixth today and went three for four. I know they like Jake Bowers in the five spot to kind of be protected by Reese Hoskins in that regard. I digress. He had a great day, obviously, to follow up getting booed, having the slide, having Jeff McNeil yell in his face. And furthermore, the professionalism to not fight back. It, it was really impressive to keep his composure in both scenarios. Think about it yesterday. He just let Jeff McNeil shout in his face, then ran back to the dugout. Today, Johan Ramirez throws at his ear, and he just stands there and said, come on, that's messed up, man. He looked at the umpire, umpire got in the middle of it, and, and now he's not going to be suspended in all of this. He's an innocent party in all of this. He kept his composure. Johan's going to miss a game, probably. Jeff McNeil continues to shout from the rafters, and I, I just don't get it. My second big takeaway is this team is taking after its manager, Pat Murphy. This is not meant to be a dig on Craig Council. But the way I see it, Pat Murphy, we've known, is an intense, to-the-point, detail-oriented guy. But there's a little bit of an edge. There's a little bit of a needle. There's a little bit of a, you know, we know him as a smack talker. We know him that he, uh, he commands, you know, excellence. He commands the team to play to its potential. And so far, I've seen an edge. Everyone doing their role. 
Look at yesterday. Calling on Bryce Terang off the bench, drops down a perfect bunt, and then the Mets mess it up, and he gets a base out of it. Jake Bowers yesterday off the bench. Hey, I need you to get a knock. He gets a knock, gets a double. Joey Ortiz nearly made a fantastic play at third base today coming off the bench to play defense. They are taking after their manager in the first two games of the year. No worry about that transition for me. And finally, my goodness, speaking of the defense, they are seriously going to pick it once again. Bryce Terang, I cannot stop smiling watching him play defense. It is so much fun. He made a couple of nice plays today. Joey Ortiz, we mentioned, nearly made the great play there in the eighth inning. Uh, and I look at this outfield right now with Churio in right, Freelick in center, and Yelly in left. Yelly had an outfield assist today. Was it the hardest throw of his life? No, but he played the carom perfectly. He got old foe Harrison Bader. Uh, I love it. I, I think this team is going to be just as good, if not better, defensively year over year. As we wait on Craig Kishon to join us here again, join us 855-616-1620. Again, 855-616-1620. If you want to join us, you can tweet me as well at Dom underscore Catronio. That's spelled C-O-T-R-O-N-E-O, Cotron-E-O. So I'll get to your comments. I'll get to the fan reaction here today. I really think this one's all about the fans today. Brewers win 7-6. We are just getting rolling with our first show of the season. It's all brought to you by Fifth Third Bank with a local Milwaukee team. Fifth Third Bank also knows how to hit it out of the park. They've been serving businesses in the area for nearly 15 years, offering industry-specific expertise and local decision-making capabilities. It's going to help your business succeed. Commercial banking value that only Fifth Third can deliver. Fifth Third Bank, National Association, member FDIC. We're back, baby. Let's get this things. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Let's talk more about Reese, unspoken rules of baseball. We'll talk about the performance. We'll get down the box score as well. Stay with us. Just rolling. Brewers extra innings on your home of the Brewers. Six twenty. WTMJ. Coming up, more Brewers Extra Innings on WTMJ. You've probably heard about employee stock ownership plans before, but what separates Fifth Third Bank from others when it comes to these plans? A succession plan that benefits business owners and employees. Full and partial sales, second stage transactions, repurchase obligation financing, and seller note refinancing. ESOPs can offer tax advantages, increased liquidity, employee incentives, and overall diversification of net worth to help your company plan for the future. Fifth Third Bank, National Association, custom solutions built around your goals. Member FDIC. Hey, WTMJ's John Merck here, here. I've got a great trip coming up this Christmas. I want you to be with us. It's Magical Christmas Markets. Five nights in Innsbruck, the capital of the Alps. We'll take in a horse-drawn carriage ride, make traditional strudel, and spend lots of time shopping in beautiful, historic Christmas markets throughout Europe. It is going to be special hunting for those treasures. I've got a beautiful brochure. I'll send it to you. Shoot me an email, john.mercure at wtmj.com. john.mercure, M-E-R-C-U-R-E at wtmj.com. Magical Christmas Markets. This December, won't you come with us? If there's any one thing that matters most to home sellers, it's their real estate agent getting as close to their asking price as possible. This is Angela Calais with Benefit Realty, and here's a fact that should get you to think twice before calling anyone else. Statistics reveal Benefit Realty's list price to sale price ratio is over 100%. When you choose Benefit Realty, we're working as hard as we can to get you all that we can. Get proven performance and full service all for only 3.9% real estate commissions. Benefit-Realty.com. This is Angela Calais with Benefit Realty. When it comes to getting the peak price for your home sale, it's all a matter of eyeballs. The more people we get your home listing in front of, the more opportunities arise. At Benefit Realty, we are ultra confident in promising you maximum exposure to your listing. We want to sell it fast and for as much as we can for you. That way, all sides win. And I have to believe that's why we've achieved the strong growth that we have. Maximum exposure means maximum home sale value. Benefit-Realty.com Welcome back to Brewers Extra Innings. Welcome back. I'm Tom Catronio. Craig Kishan joining us in just a moment here on WTMJ to break down the Brewers' second win of the season. A perfect 2-0 to start the year. They defeat the Mets again, 7-6. to six. Let's go ahead and go down the box score here, shall we? I want to spend some time looking at things here, and uh, this is when we'll welcome in Craig here shortly as well. But looking down the lineup here today, Freelick got his first start of the season today. Freelick went 1-5. for five. He had a run scored. Quiet day for him, a strikeout to open the game, but then put the ball in play in the rest of his uh, uh, times at bat. Also, flawless center field. 
no qualms about what happened to him out there in center. Uh, you know, good starting point. Remember, he's not truly a center fielder really at the big league level. He's played a little bit of center the last last season, but the Brewers ultimately view him as a corner outfielder and maybe even a third baseman one day if that experiment isn't dead with Oliver Dunn making his big league debut today. Speaking of Oliver Dunn, congratulations to Ollie. He got his first big league hit as well. So one for four today for Oliver Dunn, the kid from Salt Lake City. He had the family in attendance, uh, a clean single off the bag at first. It ricocheted. It might have been a double if it got over the bag. But nonetheless, uh, Oliver Dunn is officially in the box score and has his own page on baseball reference. It is bold because he is a big leaguer. Another guy I want to shout out on this box score because can easily get lost in the shuffle, Elvis Piguero. Elvis Piguero earns the win today. And, you know, the, the pitcher win, especially for a reliever, isn't that big of a deal. But two innings, six up. Six down, four ground outs. He threw a disgusting sinker that broke two feet. Yes, two feet, 24 inches of horizontal movement to old friend Tyrone Taylor. No strikeouts. He's not necessarily a strikeout guy, but 97-mile-an-hour sinkers with nasty, nasty movement. I'm really excited to see him, and somebody had quoted that video that I had tweeted saying, thank you, Angels and Hunter Renfro, because I remember a lot of folks were – not fans of that trade. Like, wait, why, why, why are you getting rid of Hunter Renfro? He was one of the biggest home run hitters a year ago. And then, well, they got Elvis Piguero and two other arms, including Jansen Junk and Adam Seminaris. We might see Jansen Junk at some point this season as well. But Elvis Piguero going to be a big piece of this bullpen moving forward. Let me get to Twitter here. Let me get to a few responses so far from our takeaway conversation. This one from Joseph. The offense will be more fun to watch. I agree. I, I think the offense, to say the least, is added some reinforcement with Reese Hoskins and Gary Sanchez, but there's a variety of ways to score runs, right? I, I, Jackson Churio's batting ninth against righties, and you've got guys available off the bench like Gary Sanchez. Maybe you'll have Jake Bowers available off the bench because most days Reese will be playing first base. And then you've got a guy like Bryce Terang who can steal three bags in a game. He did that for the first time in his career today. Stole base three times. How many bases is Bryce Terang going to steal this season? He was in the mid-20s last year and let's be honest, Bryce was barely on base. If the Brewers believe in his change in approach and what he's able to do, Bryce Terang today batting eighth, on base twice with a pair of singles and stole three bags. Now he didn't score but nonetheless... If he's going to get over 30, 40 stolen bases, that means more opportunities for Churio and Freelick and eventually Mitchell once they get back to the top of the lineup and get things rolling in the right direction for the Brewers' offense. This one from Nate definitely seems like the team has a chip on the collective shoulder here early. I agree. I, I, I kind of what I was saying earlier with the taking after their manager and, you know, take no bleep attitude and see what you can, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I want to say poke the bear because that's what the Mets have been doing to Reese Hoskins and they got bit by the bear today. But the point is is that, hey, if, if you've got it, flaunt it and be confident in your abilities. That's how I'm feeling about this team. And let's also hit the brakes here for a second. It's two games, okay? Don't play in the parade. It's all good. It's a great start. Love to see it. Winning a series is great on the road, no matter who you're playing, especially when it's the New York Mets. When I see this team, when I see this roster starting to show their versatility, the mix and match, the manager hitting the right levers like yesterday with the bunts and the pinch hits, that's going to start to snowball. That's going to start to create, okay, well, I know I'm not in the starting lineup today, but I could get tapped on at some point and say, hey, you know, Dom, we need you to come on and get a knock today. You know, that sort of thing could certainly be happening later in the season. Uh, a, a, another couple of thoughts here as well. The the uh, My favorite gift here, that was a response on the Christian Yelich uh, outfield assist. It's, uh, if you're familiar with Happy Gilmore, this one from Kyle. It's, uh, uh-oh. Happy learned how to putt. <laughs> now Christian knows how to throw, but that's been a point of emphasis the last couple of years with Christian Yelich developing the arm and getting things going in the right direction. 
1620. Again, 855 616 1620. If you want to join us, you can tweet me as well at Dom underscore Catronio. Take a breather, and when we come back, Crick and Sean will be with us on the other side of this break on your home of the Brewers. On deck. Okay, I'm ready to record my jewelry store's new radio spot. We got a great script that really goes after Diamonds Direct and how they're nothing special. And how we can match their price. Great stuff. Yeah. Great, great. And uh, we have this new technology that bleeps out any false claims, so it saves us time with editing. So um, you can start anytime. Okay, <clears throat> here it goes. <clears throat> when you visit our jewelry store, we'll absolutely guarantee direct <laughs> Our diamonds come straight from the mine. We have cutters and <laughs> Hey, what the the hard truth is that other jewelry stores simply can't do what Diamonds Direct can. Diamonds Direct has special relationships with De Beers, international connections, and virtually unlimited buying power. The result is true direct importer pricing, exceptional quality, and up to 30 times the diamond selection you find at other stores. I can't believe this thing won't let me say b Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. Get more truth at DiamondsDirect.com. 0% interest for up to three years at Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. I'm Gina Della from Pella. Pella's free in-home consultations make replacing or redesigning your windows and doors easy. We go beyond just measuring and handing you a quote. We take the time to listen and educate you on all your product options. And with DesignWorks, you can see what your home will look like before you buy. Whether you're looking to replace your windows due to damage or it's time for a refresh and you'd like to revitalize your home style, choosing from Pella's wide range of windows and doors will complement your home's unique design. Pella can also customize, providing nearly endless possibilities for maximum design flexibility with dramatic sizes, custom colors, finishes, profiles, product types, and more. Order by March 31st to get 0% interest for up to three years. Set your free consultation at PellaWI.com. Certain restrictions apply. This is Brewers Extra Innings. Now the 2 1. Line drive to left field. Yelich goes back on it. Yelich has it go over his head and hits about halfway up the fence. Good throw to second by Yelich. Tag applied on Bader and out. Yelich got it on the fly to Bryce Terang. One of the highlights of today's game, certainly defensively, to say the least. What a day for Yelich. He did not have a single outfield assist all of last year, and now he's got one in the uh, second game of the season. Dom Catronio with you. Craig Kashan joining us in just a moment as well. 855 616 This one from Tomas and McQuanago. Brewers' vents are leading the way. Pitchers are stepping up their game, keeping their heads cool. Oh, wow. The last part there, I don't know about Abner Uribe. There's certain, certainly something to talk about with the pistol celebration. Kurt Hoag was tweeting about it with our friends over at uh, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel about, eh, he's been told to maybe cool that off. Now, after everything that went down today and everything that went down with uh, Reese Hoskins and, and, and that sort of thing, that might be something to uh, keep an eye on. Right now, I'm getting ready to welcome in Craig as he's throwing on the headset. We're going to be getting the video fired up here as well on YouTube. As Make sure that Craig kishan has got the headset. And you good to go, buddy? I'm here. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Oh, gosh, good to I didn't see know you. we were on TV. We're on TV. You're on TV. You wow. can't leave. You can't escape. I, I would have put a tie on. Oh, and... man. I'm wearing a hoodie. Don't give me that. You can't big league me Come, like that. A little, little tie. Uh, I need some makeup. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Got the receding hairline going still here. Don't talk to me about hairlines, man. <laughs> Come on. That, that's a low blow. Uh, Craig Kishon, the one and only joining us now for the first time this season. First of all, welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, buddy. Good to be back with you here. Good start to the year. <sighs> what a start. I, I think now that I've I've got you here. We got to talk about Reese. We got to talk about the last two days. We got to talk about the fact that he can keep his composure. The fact that Jeff McNeil seems to be on. And I, I mean, there's a lot of ways I want to get into this. But first and foremost, the most basic question I have in your eyes: the slide, legal, illegal, dirty. Wh what did you see? Well, by the letter of the law, I saw a legal slide. I don't know if I would have done that. Uh, it was a little bit late, I think, in, in most people's eyes. I get that. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing. 
you got to have somebody leading the way and and play tough skin baseball and and put on the big boy pants and go out there. This is a really young club. I'm sure, you know, you've talked about this, you know, throughout your your show yesterday a little bit, but but here's the thing. Um you got to have a veteran going out there leading the way. The slide itself was perfectly legal. I don't want to ever see guys get hurt as much as I don't want to see guys get hurt when they're they're being thrown at at the plate either. Mm-hmm. So, uh there's a little more freedom to do that than there is for what's happening out on the bases here right now, but we can't play, we can't play baseball without, uh, without it being played the right way, and we can't protect uh, players from getting hurt. Um, every every base you take, every corner you turn, every swing you make. I mean, um, so by the letter of the law, baseball says yes. There still is going to be contact sometimes, and that was one of the sometimes. We've seen far less of it. Uh, with the new rule in place, uh, but that was one of the times where you're going to see contact. And and sorry that that McNeil got upset it was kind of absurd. He got so upset because none of his teammates did, but right. um, he was also the one that got got his ankle taken out a little bit. So. Uh, yeah, I, I can understand the fear of injury and the fear. And remember, this rule was instituted because of a Mets player getting taken out. So, I mean, they as an organization, now I'm not saying McNeil was, you know, the, the root of this, but remember Tejada back in the playoffs, I believe it was 2018, right, in the the, in the DS before the Brewers saw Chase Utley and that Dodger team was the, the dirty slide that led to the rule breaking Tejada's leg and all that fun stuff. But in my eyes, I'm with you. In the moment, I was like, oh, man, that was kind of late, was it? But I never said... That was a dirty slide. I never said, oh, his spikes were high. I never said, oh, he was trying to injure a guy. I, th- I, I think that – I agree with you. I think that's the key. He wasn't trying to injure the guy. Yeah. He, he barely made an effort to take him out, to be honest with you. It, 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 in my eyes, like, I was trying to shift it. All right, let, let's say, like, a little tweener up the first baseline, okay? And if it's Pete Alonzo running down there to field that baseball versus, you know, let's just say another big guy. In the, let's just say Reese, Okay. You got two heavyweights, you know, two trains coming at each other. There's going to be contact there because the ball's on the line. You got to jump out of the way. You can't not expect contact on a double play ball. And furthermore, I think McNeil was trying to find a cop out for his terrible footwork. He just thought, all right, I'm sanctuary. I'm safe on the bag. And as you said, it was legal. It was fine. I don't understand why he was so mad about it because he could have, he had a whole lane to jump out of the way and throw. They weren't going to turn to. He obviously dropped the baseball. But jump out of the way. Show me that you know how to play big league second base. That's the first lesson you're taught in, in, in you know, little rookie league ball. Like, get out of the way. Like, there's a guy sliding, get out of the way, and try to find a way to turn a double play. I I don't remember the last time that I saw somebody um, try to not just steal the spotlight. I don't think it was much about that, but call attention to something that that, uh, really didn't need it at all. And and to throw the fit that he did and continue to throw the fit, the fact that that bullpens came out and the benches came out over that, uh, was pretty stunning to me, and it you know I want to see less of that in baseball. That's for sure. I want to see good hard playing, mm-hmm. and and that's what we saw in that play, and and less of the whining. I I, I think uh, one of the best things that I've seen in years was the whiny face yes. that that Hoskins delivered uh, to McNeil from the dugout. That is now obviously a, a going to be a good trending thing now. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, what do you got on? Reese, how well he handled yesterday and today, for that matter, it's getting stunning. thrown behind him. Isn't it stunning? I, I just, that's the other thing. I, I, I've i been around a long time. I, I've seen a lot of stuff, especially from this team, and uh, a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, you know, with the collisions and the rule changes and that. I, I don't, I can't put my finger on a guy that, that I remember that has held their composure not only once, but twice. I mean, the fact that he was clearly thrown at tonight uh, and he barely moved from his spot outside of the batter's box, didn't charge anybody, didn't point at anybody, uh, didn't even do that yesterday. Um, he, he laid on the ground because he, he heard McNeil barking at him right away, and he's like, all right, get it out of your system, man, because I'm going to get up, 
I'm not going to look at you, and I'm going to the dugout dugout because this is stupid. And I'm sure he thought the same thing today. I've got three hits against you guys, including a home run. You had your chance. We're up big right now, and now you're throwing at me. What are you doing? So Mm -hmm. if I'm him, I'm saying, hey, you guys have made two bonehead decisions or or choices here, and I'm not going to be a part of it. And not a lot of guys can handle that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, and we don't know Reese real well yet. Mm-hmm. We're getting to know him pretty well. But um, we're, we're seeing something develop here pretty nicely, not only with the relationship that he's going to have, but how he's going to influence the young guys. Right, we'll wrap the point on this before we take a break. Uh, Bally Sports Wisconsin showed a great shot before Reese is at bat. Pat Murphy coming over, you know, put hand over mouth. Yeah. And we can only assume yeah. what yeah. he said. Yeah. But it had to be something along the lines of, be ready here. This might be the moment because uh, I already talked about Ron Darling's comments saying, like, oh, it was two hours too late, which I think he's absolutely right. I I wouldn't throw with Luis Severino at him. And Ron Darling was trying to say, oh, you brush him back, and then that's the end of it. No, I think that would have festered a little bit. The fact that, look, you're bringing in a young arm, Johan Ramirez, he's kind of been around the block. You you can kind of see it coming. This might be the moment. The game is starting to get out of hand, and this might be the moment. And Pat Murphy had the presence to come over to Reese and say, hey, man, be ready. That's, I mean, I'm really impressed. Pat Murphy game two, he was already ready to go in that situation. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, though, that that's that's part of, and and I know you've been going through this for the last six weeks uh, at, at spring training. But when when you get questions of, can Pat Murphy handle these decisions? Can he handle? Uh, making the right choices on the major league level. He doesn't have a lot of major league managerial experience, but we'll, we all argue if, you, if you're smart enough to know that a guy's been around the game for 40-some years on the college level of coaching and making major decisions. It's not like this guy doesn't know what decisions to make, what what to say to certain players in certain situations throughout the game. It's in his blood. It's in his skin. It's in his brain. It's in his hair. You can just tell. Uh, and that and that was uh, a real key moment that I thought that we captured on video of a manager being a manager and making sure his players understand uh, every key situation there is because if they don't and something happens – that it's the manager's fault. And uh, the manager can accept blame. You know that, Dom. But, mm-hmm. but they want to, more than anything, have their guys prepared at the highest level. It's going to be a very, very fun year getting to know Pat Murphy and seeing what makes him tick. And, man, he's already got benches clearing in, in two games into this one. So what, what's the rest of the it. year going to hold? I love it. Let's actually start talking about the game. We'll get that into – we'll start into – Christian Yelich will start talking about the defense and maybe uh, a little bit of a new wrinkle that the Brewers are trying to throw out a little bit more. I'll get to that in just a moment. 855-616-1620. If you want to join us, again, 855-616-1620. That is a, the talking text line if you want to join the show. More with Craig Kishon after this on WTMJ. Coming up, more Brewers Extra Innings on WTMJ. We've told you about Moses Hadara. The diamond cutter who created the Kessler 81. The magical diamond that vibrates with light. Kessler's works with crazy diamond cutters. Geniuses who create wonderful, spectacular, crazy diamond shapes. The one thing these crazy genius diamonds all have in common is that they explode with light. The Kessler Emerald Cut Diamond sends out rippling waves of light like water lapping onto a beach. The Kessler Square Radiant Diamond glows like the sun on the horizon. Sometimes sunrise. Sometimes sunset. Come to Kessler's. Come to Kessler's. Come to Kessler's. Ask to see the rippling waves of light, like water on the beach. Ask to see the glow that looks like sunrise and sunset. Ask to see the Kessler Crazy Genius Diamonds. See them for yourself. See them for yourself. See them for yourself. To find the Kessler's nearest you, visit Kessler'sDiamonds.com. Here's another remarkable success story from QC Kinetics. This one from Chad, who hurt his knee at the gym one day, and it just kept on hurting. 
for months. From my high school football and wrestling days, I already had a little bit of damage in there, but this just sent it over the edge. Chad tried traditional treatments with no improvement when he turned to the non-surgical regenerative treatments at QC Kinetics. It was really fascinating how they did their work, and the science behind it was very intriguing, and it works. Extracting the cure out of my own body blew my mind. It's like I'm brand new again. It was fantastic. That's because the QC Kinetics natural biologic treatments use your body's own healing power to restore damaged tissue in your hips, shoulders, back, and knees, providing long-lasting relief. Now I'm back at the gym. I'm 100% feeling great. If you're tired of suffering with pain from arthritis or injury, call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 414-285-3474. That's 414-285-3474. 414-285-3474. You're listening to Brewers Extra Innings, presented by Fifth Third Bank on WTMJ. We're back for more. Craig Deshaun is here. I'm Dom Catronio. Brewers are 2-0. They win today 7-6 and yesterday 3-1. So let's actually start talking about the, the game itself here, right? This, this was a game that the Brewers came out, punched in the mouth quickly, Three runs in the first inning. Obviously, the Boo Birds with Reese after everything that went down yesterday. But but lost in the shuffle is a really, really strong first inning from the Brewers' bats. William with an infield hit. That might get switched to an error. Yelly swinging a hot bat to start the year. And Willie actually started the scoring. Adamas, that is, pulling a double down the left field line. It's a reminder that Adamas in this lineup, you know, they can contribute without hitting home runs all the time. Obviously, Reese connected later, but... This might be the more M.O. of the Brewers' consistent hits and, you know, pass the baton kind of way, right? Yeah, I think that's something that uh, Vinny and I talked about on the on the TV side post game. You know, you look at this final score of 7-6, to six and, you know, e- even Vin said this, that, that we may see more scoring like this, and I think maybe we kind of all anticipated that the offense has definitely been boosted up uh, now, over what it has been the last several years. So you would expect this team to score five, six, seven runs a game potentially, and, and obviously we saw that today. Now do they win 7-2 to two like maybe we thought they were going to, and that was a score in the eighth inning? Uh, certainly not the case because the pitching still needs to you know, bring it up and learn some things along the way, and I think the offense just needs to continue to pre- protect them as best as possible. So, uh, But the early runs, I mean – that, that was awesome to see because you saw Adamas get in the mix and then you saw Hoskins first pitch, you know, RBI, uh, two RBI single uh, to end that scoring in the first inning. So it's going to be it's going to be something to see uh, how these veteran guys feel a little bit more comfortable in in new roles. You know, Dom, with with Reese being here for the first time. Willie now has better protection, I think, in the spot that he's in. I, I just feel like he's got to f- be a little more comfortable knowing Contreras and Yelich are, are ahead of him, and then who's ever, whatever one of the rookies is leading off, it seems like. So um, I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing with, with the mix going on right now. This tweet made me smile from friend of the program, uh, Mr. <laughs> Cody. The, uh, the, the tweet goes like this from Cody. First time, long time. Can you confirm or deny that Yelich is in fact back? I'll take my answer off here. Thanks. So Cody is on the uh, Brewers video team and does great talent with their social content. One of the guys that has a giant camera on his shoulder. But uh, Cody, <laughs> first two games, man. I'm with you, man. That's a great sign. I think the biggest sign for me, not only was it a left-on-left home run yesterday for Yelly, but he pulled it. And we haven't seen a lot of pulled home runs from Yelly the last few years. That That was... I'm not going to overreact two games in, but we've 111 off the bat today, too. There's a lot to see and like from a healthy Christian Yelich right now. Well, I mean, you go back to, to last year, and, and he made it. His whole game was improved uh, last year compared to the, the previous couple of seasons where it was just really tough for him uh, for, for whatever reason. And, and I'll say this. I, I'll bring this up to you, and I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in your take on this. For some reason, that comment that Pat Murphy made yesterday about uh, putting Churio uh, not only in the lineup to, to make his major league debut in the opener, but putting him at the top of the lineup, going to Christian Yelich and saying, am I crazy for thinking about doing this? 
And Yelich said, why not? Do it. Let's put him in there. He, he's earned it. He can handle it. Uh, and Murph goes, okay, we're in. Just the fact that, that Murph goes to, to Yelich for that, uh, I just look at this not without knowing 100%, but I, I got to believe that maybe Kristen Yelich might feel a little more comfortable this season with some change, some major change that has that has taken place. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he's going to be a guy that's going to be allowed to have a voice. Maybe maybe that wasn't the case in the past. I, I'm not saying that I know all that stuff, but I, I, I feel like these are some of the little subtle messages that are going on here right now. And, and just the fact that Kristen had a great spring, uh, welcoming in, you know, Murph, all the new guys, there could be something to that just to be back to, you know, mm-hmm. you have to be comfortable to, to succeed. And if you're great, you really have to be comfortable to, to be great and stay at that level, MVP type. Yeah, he's, you know, we don't know if MVP Yelly's ever going to come back. But if, if Miami Yelly comes back like we saw last season, if he repeats another season like he had last year, a 270-plus average, an 850-plus OPS while stealing 25, 30 bags, hitting 40 doubles, and maybe hitting 20, 25 homers, this team's going to be super successful. And I, I think Yelich understands that he doesn't need to carry the load because he's got help around him. And games like today, right, where he, he didn't necessarily, you know, tear the cover off the ball aside from that last at, at bat with the RBI single in the eighth. You know, a couple flyouts, a couple ground outs, two for five. There's nothing wrong with that. He he handed the bet, the baton to Reese Hoskins today. And then maybe tomorrow it'll be Willie, and then maybe the next day it'll be William Contreras. Like, there's depth in this lineup, and there's this is something that Brewers fans kind of haven't seen since maybe 2018 where you can legitimately say, okay, the next guy I'm in, next guy I'm in, next guy I'm in. 18-19 reminds me of those offenses where it's like, okay, between Aggie and between Braun and between Yelich and then between Kane, and then, like, okay, there's some there's some line here. There's a little bit of a vision of okay, this could be a really tough lineup to get through. Yeah, and and you know the other thing is just the importance of knowing what your eighth inning at bat means, and when the game's six to two, well, I got a guy out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna get another single and bring him home. And it turns out before the game's over, that was the decisive RBI in the in the run. I I don't want to spend too long here, but I, I do want to quickly. Pivot here, a guy that we haven't—I haven't said his word, his name once today—is DL Hall. And DL Hall, y- you look at the line: four innings, six hits, two runs earned, a homer, two walks, one strikeout, uh, and also a hit batter. But I only 73 pitches, only three whiffs. I'm sure there were jitters. He just admitted that to the writing press there in, in New York. There's there's two ways I look at it. If this is the starting point, sign me up. I'm ready to see how he can grow. And the second part of it is I want to make sure DL has a few of these where, yeah, the line doesn't look pretty, but then you tell people, okay, well, you could see the curve's close. He was missing on a few pitches here and there. Yes, he only had one strikeout. But what I see is uncomfortable swings. I see ground balls. I see the home run by Alvarez, and I give my hat, my tip my hat to Alvarez, but I think this is a great starting point for D.L. Hall personally. I, I liked it a lot. I liked what I saw a lot. And look, four innings, I, I'm not even looking at that right now because um, what inning was it that he, was it the uh, fourth or third inning? Third that, inning. That, that he got a uh, couple of outs and then and then struggled, what, 20 pitches to get that, that third out. Mm-hmm. Who knows if he would have gone a little bit deeper after that. Uh, doesn't matter here at this point. I saw a lot of poise. I didn't see a guy who admittedly was nervous. I understand that he was. I would have expected him to be. But I didn't see signs of nervousness. I didn't see signs of, I'm not sure if I belong in this Brewer rotation. I'm not sure if I'm feeling too much pressure. I was traded for Corbin Burns. I didn't see any of that. I saw a guy on, from our side saying, we gave up Corbin Burns to get this guy and one more. But, I mean, it was to get another high-profile, high-ceiling left-handed pitcher, mm-hmm. and, and I saw a lot of good things. I thought it was 
a tremendous building block for him today. I really did. No one's dominant in their first year. No. It's very rare to be no. dominant. Look at Burns' first year. Look at Woodruff and Peralta starting to get their footing. Yeah. It, this is the starting point. I can't wait to see him grow and blossom as we get to know him a little bit more. Craig, you're back on the program, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. It's great to be talking ball with you again, All right, my pal, friend. you got it. Have a good one. All right, Craig Sean here on WTMJ. We're going to hear from the skipper, Pat Murphy, coming up next. I'll get to a couple of these texts as well, 855 616 855-616-1620, right here on the home of the Brewers, 620 WTMJ. On deck, more Brewers Extra Innings. WTMJ's Vince Vetrano for Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin. Injuries happen, but you don't have to play in pain or stay on the sidelines. Whether it's your kids dealing with a sports injury, college athletes, or the rest of us weekend warriors, the experts at Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin will quickly diagnose your problem, lay out a treatment plan that works for you, and get you back in the game. They fixed my knee. My mother-in-law is back on the dance floor with a new hip. These are the experts you can trust. Visit orthowisconsin.com. The countdown to opening day is on. Get your tickets for an action-packed 2024 Brewer season now. That's any game you want, any way you want. All season, featuring brand new giveaways, brand new theme nights and community nights, can't miss ticket deals, and all the season's best Brewers action. Make sure you're here for every moment. Check out the complete schedule and grab your seats now at brewers.com slash tickets. Hey, it's WTMJ's Steve's Caffiti for the Bath Authority. If your bath or shower is old, outdated, has mold and mildew, broken tiles, you got to call my friends at the Bath Authority. The Bath Authority provides the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. Their modern, durable tubs and showers are designed with an exclusive high-tech polymer liner. What that means to you? Low maintenance, resistance to mold and mildew, easy to clean, and lasts for decades. You're their priority at the Bath Authority. TheBathAuthority.com. A better bath awaits. You're listening to Brewers Extra Innings, presented by Fifth Third Bank on WTMJ. Get to a few of these texts, and we'll hear from the manager here for a little bit after these. This one from Aaron in Illinois. Great start to the 2024 season. Really like seeing Churio up to start the season. Excited to see what he's capable of doing. And Uribe has been pretty good so far. Can't fault him for giving up the homer to Alonzo. Now, what's the time frame, though, on Garrett Mitchell? Go crew. Appreciate the text there, Aaron. Uh, Garrett is out six to eight weeks. He is traveling with the team. It's a fracture in his hand. We will know more on Tuesday when we get the chance to talk to him face-to-face. Uh, he will be around the team during all of this. Uh, Mike in Colorado, good to have you back here on the program, Mike. Fabulous beginnings of the 2024 season. Already can see how this team will be different from recent previous years. I think Pat Murphy's Brewers will be more energized, tougher, and spontaneous than under prior leadership. The blend of youth and veteran maturity is going to make for a surprising and successful season. Appreciate the text there, Mike. Let's hear from the skipper, the rookie manager, Pat Murphy. He is one of our pillars. You know, we keep saying that, but Reese is Reese is a special dude, man. He's not just a, a really good baseball player, and um, he's really committed to playing a game the right way, and he's really committed to leading um, him and Yelly and, and uh, Adamas and, and um, uh, William, you know, Devin Williams, Woody, Miley. Those are the right guys to have at the forefront of your team. Murph, did you come into today maybe expecting a little something from the Mets for Reese and then when that happened in the seventh inning, um, can you share what you talked to the umps about there? I'm, I'm assuming yeah, it's just really simple. You're, you know, when a player has a history with the team, and you've been, if, if you're watching MLB Channel, which I just happen to keep on, and all of a sudden, you know, balls are going over his head, and you know, there's a history there, and we had an altercation the day before, and one goes over his head. Albeit, I bet it wasn't on purpose. You know, I bet it wasn't. But I'm trying to protect the guy. Like, you know what? Um, you know, we we. we we got. I didn't. I didn't suggest they throw him out of the game. I. I just said, hey man, we got to take hold of this. We don't want. I don't want people getting hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? That. That's the whole thing. We can all be mad and we can all have our opinions, of how you play the game and all that. And we can all have that. But the bottom line is, is I don't want guys getting hurt. You know, I thought the umpires did a great job of handling it. I don't know that I would have thrown them out of the game, but they have their own protocol that I don't obviously understand. So you didn't think that there was intent. I don't think so. 
first pitch, the first pitch that he sees, two run single, a couple innings later, long at bat, two run homer. Is there a certain like are guys born with that? Do you kind of respond to those moments when they're all the attention's on them and to deliver big hits like that? Well, I don't. I don't think you're born with that. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't think you're born with that. I think you develop that over over time in the game, learning the game the right way and and competing the right way and understanding what competition really is and and how you compete. You know, and when you let your emotions run that, then you're not going to be a great competitor. You may feel like a great competitor. You may feel fierce that you want to fight and you want to do all that, but that's not competing. Competing is being in the moment and understand, allowing yourself to not let the emotion of the game run your performance. Um, so that's my opinion anyway. So it can be argued, I'm sure, by better, more wise people. Or uh, 16 hits today for the offense. How nice was it to see the production up and down the lineup? Yeah, I've, I've uh, I'm pleased with some guys, and and uh, some guys are not having great at bats yet. But I'm I'm excited. Guys are are staying with it. You know, uh, understanding how tough it is to win a major league baseball game. And uh, when you look at their lineup, um, it's daunting. You know, what I mean, they have they have a great lineup. Uh, experience, speed, power. Um, that the the heavy set kid that hits in the middle of the lineup, man, that that dude can hit. They can all hit, and Alonzo, that was a heck of a swing off of 100 miles an hour at the top of the zone. We'll get into the highlights coming up next as we're getting near the end of our show here at the top of the hour. Stay with us. This is Brewers Extra Innings. Coming up, more Brewers Extra Innings on WTMJ. So there are some things all real estate agents do, and there are certain things some agents do. Most of us are full service. Some charge 6% commission for full service. We charge 3.9%. But one person's full service isn't exactly equal to the others. And it's important that you know there is a difference. You're going to want an agent who is reliable, responsive, that feels like they're working for you to live up to all the expectations you have when hiring a full service agent. You'll find that at Benefit Realty, where you pay less for full service. This is Angela Calais with Benefit Realty. When it comes to getting the peak price for your home sale, it's all a matter of eyeballs. The more people we get your home listing in front of, the more opportunities arise. At Benefit Realty, we are ultra confident in promising you maximum exposure to your listing. We want to sell it fast and for as much as we can for you. That way, all sides win. And I have to believe that's why we've achieved the strong growth that we have. Maximum exposure means maximum home sale value. Benefit-Realty.com from big tailgate parties to cozy dinners for two, the freshest ideas start with a stop at Century Foods. Now through Wednesday, save on 1.38 to 11.36 or eight count selected varieties, Frito-Lay Lay's, Kettle Chips, Munchies, or Bean Dip, two for $5. 24-pack Ice Mountain Spring Water, $4.99. 8.2 to 20 ounce selected varieties, C-Pack Seafood, $6.99. Four count selected varieties, Dan and Greek or Danimals Yogurt, two for $8. Why'd you throw my glass across the room? I have to keep practicing. The vase from Aunt Sophie? I'm warming up in case I get to take the mound at American Family Field. Read this. Win the ultimate baseball fan experience at Century Foods? You either get to throw out the first pitch, hold the finish line for the famous racing sausages, or be on the field during batting practice. My new TV! Just doing a little batting practice of my own. The ultimate baseball fan experience. Return the entry form found in the weekly ad to any Century by July 24th. Siding Unlimited named the best window installers, not just here, but in the whole USA. Get the best. Siding Unlimited, three-time winner as America's best window installer. For windows, you call Siding Unlimited first and directly. SidingUnlimited.com. What's wrong with Rick? He's kind of spacey today. That's Rick's identical twin, Scott. He's not used to answering to Rick. What's going on? Rick asked me to keep it secret, but he asked his twin to cover his shift so he could go to Diamonds Direct to shop. But this is a jewelry store. Yeah, I know. But the prices and selection are so much better at Diamonds Direct. Rick doesn't want the boss to get suspicious, so Scott's here in case the boss sees Rick at Diamonds Direct. But that would mean that the boss is at Diamonds Direct too? Yeah. We have a lot of secrets. You never know who you'll run into at Diamonds Direct. With unbeatable direct importer prices, the highest quality diamonds, the most sought after designer rings, the best customer service, the strongest guarantees in the industry. It's just a no-brainer. You think if Scott had a mustache, would he look like me? No. <laughs> Go where everyone else goes. 
Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. Well, what if I shaved? Still not. For store hours, directions, and more, go to DiamondsDirect.com. Ready for this? Get up! This? Get up! And this? Get up! Time for tonight's highlights. Here's Dominic Catronio. Let's get after it, shall we? After all the fireworks of opening day and, you know, on the field fireworks with a controversial slide from Reese Hoskins, ready to play ball once again today on Saturday. New Met coming across uh, the off of Manhattan Bridge, I should say. Luis Severino getting the start against the Brewers. Things got off quickly, off the rails quickly for Severino. An infield single for William Contreras. Christian Yelich stoinked this single. First and second and one out. Willie Adamas at the plate. Looks back at Contreras at second and the 1-1. Line down the left field line. This is going to get down. Should score Contreras as he's jogging around third and headed for home. On his way to third is Yelich and into second with an RBI double is Willie Adamas. Lane Grindle on the call here on WTMJ. 1-0 Brewers. In fact, the next batter, they were not done. Coming up, two batters later, I should say. Reese Hoskins with the Boo Birds at his back. Hey, they don't boo nobody. Severino's first pitch. Ground ball past the bag at third and off the tarp and kicks into left. Yelich is home. Here comes Adamas. He will score. Reese Hoskins with a two-run single, and the Brewers lead it 3 to nothing. And if they were booing, they weren't done booing. Two innings later, his second at bat. Severino's 2 2. Hit deep, deep to left field. Backing up Nimmo, turning, watching it sail. Goodbye. Reese Hoskins has made a statement at City Field. At one point, he was 3 for 3 in the game. It's 5 2 as we fast forward. DL Hall done for the day. Four innings, two runs. He had a no decision in his Brewers debut. We fast forward now to the seventh inning. And finally, the fireworks, if you will, that we were expecting to see maybe earlier in the game, finally showed up with Johan Ramirez. The pitch. Whoa, over his head to the backstop on the fly. Up to second goes Adamas. Hoskins drops the bat, puts his hands on his hips, and stares at Johan Ramirez, who walks towards him. Johan Ramirez would be ejected. Eventually, Reese would draw a walk and Hopefully, that's all put to bed now. But the Brewers weren't done scoring in the eighth inning. The captain, Christian Yelich. Two pitch. Line drive back up the middle and into center field for a base hit. Freelich will trot home. Contreras stops at second. It's an RBI single for Yelich, his second hit of the day. And the Brewers' lead grows to 7 to 2. 111 off of the bat for Yelly. Then a rare misstep by the Brewers' bullpen. A three run homer by Brett Beatty off of Hobie Milner. And then. Pete Alonso hit a homer off of Abner Uribe. That made it a one-run game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Uribe ready to go. Slider's been good as well. 2-2 Two -two pinch. Slider swinging a miss. He struck him out. Abner Uribe stares into the Mets' dugout, collecting his second save in as many days. And the Brewers have taken the Mets' first two games of the 2024 season. Lane Grindle's call. That was the final. The Brewers win 7-6. We'll wrap up the program after this on WTMJ. If affordable home decor is what you've been looking for, look no further. Because we're happy to show you just how easily glass can turn up the wow value of your home. Take those old kitchen cabinet doors. You pull the cabinet doors off their hinges, mill out the center, and we'll replace it with glass. It could have a design, or we could use plain glass for a simple metro look. We can design any look you're going for, from traditional to prairie, bevel glass, even custom designs. And it doesn't stop there. Entry glass, transoms, bath mirrors, rec room mirrors. How about a rec room mirror with your personalized sports design sandblasted right on? That could be a pretty cool look. All it takes is a little outside of the box thinking, and we'll help you get there. This is Stacy Sinks with Les's Glass Service. If it's a new glass shower door, fogged or broken insulated glass replacement, or affordable glass and mirror home decor that you've been looking for, you just can't pass on Les's Glass. Les's Glass Service, serving all of southeastern Wisconsin. Find us at lessglassservice.com. Right now, the prices of diamonds are probably the lowest we'll see in our lifetime. Diamond prices are low, low, low. Here's why. It was hard to meet new people during COVID. When a person meets their soulmate, they usually get engaged about 39 months later. 
People started dating again only about 36 months ago. Most of the people who got engaged during COVID or immediately after COVID were already in a relationship before the COVID lockdown began. The Wall Street Journal even published a story about all of this. Low sales of engagement rings created a worldwide oversupply of diamonds. But now, engagement ring sales are beginning to pick up again. By the end of next spring, this temporary oversupply will be gone. And diamond prices will start climbing like crazy. If you ever wanted to own a big diamond, this is the year to do it. Find the Kesslers nearest you at Kesslersdiamonds.com. If you want to own a big diamond, the time is now. Final minute of the show here. We'll get to the last couple texts. Another Dom texting in from Lacrosse. Biggest takeaways at the team to produce runs. They have uh, there is uh, for our team to produce runs like we did in game two and the pitch the way we did in game one. We have many different ways to win this year compared to some years prior. Question is, which first or second year player do you think will make the biggest impact in terms of winning games? That's a very, very good question. As I mull on this for a moment, I'm going to go ahead and say Bryce Terang because how much he is going to play second base has been made clear. He's going to play a lot of second base. He's going to steal a lot of bags. And if he can continue to be a table setter for guys like Jackson Churio and Sal Freelich, he could be scoring a lot of runs by the end of the season. We've got another program for you tomorrow after the game. Same time, same place. First pitch will be at 1240 Central Time. Coverage begins at 1205 right here on 620 WTMJ. Monday is an off day, and then it's the home opener. Coverage wall-to-wall on Tuesday right here on your home of the Brewers, WTMJ. My thanks to Evan Wittallison for producing today's show and for Craig Kishon for joining us. I'm Dom Catronio. Keep on swinging. The wait is over. Brewers.